is March 29th, 2024. I'm Todd Dunn, and today I'd like to talk uh, about my prostate cancer saga, which fortunately uh, has apparently uh, come to a resolution, uh, at least for the next year. And what I'm going to do today is talk about uh, what happened and uh, how it was finally resolved, as I said, at least for another year, and uh, talk a little bit about prostate cancer and how screening for prostate cancer can lead to, at least in my case, some unnecessary treatment. So, what am I talking about? Well, the first pertinent piece of information is that I'm in my 70s. Uh, and that, we'll come back to why that's important in a little bit. Now, back in 2022, my uh, primary care physician retired. And uh, I had to get a new doctor. And I can't remember why, but for some reason I went to the doctor in mid-December 2022 uh, with a few issues, and the doctor uh, examined me and ordered a bunch of tests, told me I needed to go over and have some blood drawn for blood tests. Now, I'm no stranger to blood tests because I have a, a variety of leukemia, and since that was diagnosed eight years ago, I think I've had like a hundred different blood tests. And so, you know, I didn't think anything of having blood drawn for more blood tests. But one of the tests that they did was a PSA, or prostate-specific antigen test, which is just a blood test to look for a particular protein in your blood which comes from the prostate gland and no place else. And it is thought to be at least an indicator of the possibility of the onset of prostate cancer when the PSA level in your blood is high. Well, my blood test came back on in er, late December. The test was actually on the 20th of December, and I've got the numbers written down here. And uh, my, on the 21st, we got the results, and my PSA level was 7.1. That doesn't mean anything to most people. Didn't mean anything to me at the time, uh, because I'd never had a PSA test before. But it turned out that uh, that's a high number. For younger men, uh, PSA levels are typically around 2 or less. And as you get older, your PSA level gradually creeps up. The high end for men my age, early 70s, is about 6.5. So 7.1 was alarmingly high at least to my general uh, practice doctor. So my doctor referred me to a urologist. And so I went to see the urologist in January. And uh, the urologist said, well, there are a lot of reasons your PSA could be high. Uh, and uh, you know, so what we want to do is see if we can uh, give you some easy treatment, drug treatment, and see if it lowers your PSA. Basically, what he did was put me on a month of antibiotics, and this was in mid-January of 2023, and uh, also some anti-inflammatory drugs, and said, come back in a month, and we'll see if these drugs have had an effect on your PSA. And the theory was that uh, one of the reasons PSA can be high, particularly in older men, is inflammation. So the antibiotics should fight 
say, uh, an infection in the form of prostatitis, and the uh, NSAIDs he gave me, fairly powerful non-specific anti, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, uh, should in theory have uh, knocked down any inflammation and uh, any, uh, you know, and, and cause my PSA level to go down. So, on February 21st, I went back in, and they took some more blood, did another PSA test, and the number came back at 8. So, my PSA had gone up basically by 1, or about 15%, from late December to late February. And I saw the urologist uh, the next day on the 22nd of February, and he said, wow, well, this isn't good. This could be the prostate cancer. So what we need to do is a biopsy. And he said, I can fit you in the first week of March. Well, I said, well, that's not going to work for me. And he said, why? I said, well, I'm having total knee replacement surgery on February 28th and any sort of invasive procedure is probably not a good idea right after that for infection reasons. And he agreed with that, so we put that off until April. Anyway, I came in in April and I had a prostate biopsy. And basically what that is, is they stuck hollow needles into my prostate gland and took little samples of tissue. They took a dozen samples of tissue in a semi-random pattern meant to uh, sample the entire prostate. And uh, the prostate uh, samples went off to a pathology lab. They were analyzed and the result came back. And toward the end of April, I went back in and guess what? My prostate uh, biopsy came back negative for cancer, but 10 of the 12 uh, biopsy samples showed significant inflammation. Well, I was quite relieved that it, the uh, biopsy came back negative until I saw the doctor and he told me, well, yes, but these biopsies uh, have about a 30% false negative result because it's quite possible that we just missed where the prostate cancer is. So there's still about a 30% chance that you have a significant prostate cancer. He said, well, but we don't want to do anything else for a while because we need to let you recover from the biopsy before we do any imaging or anything like that. So he said, right, what I'm going to do is have you come back in the fall and we'll take a look at your PSA level again and decide where to go from there after you've you know, recovered from the biopsy. So, summer went by. Uh, I spent a lot of time reading up on prostate cancer and on treatments and wasn't feeling particularly positive after doing that and learning about prostate biopsies and uh, how effective they were at actually detecting prostate cancer. And so I went back uh, in early November, had another PSA test, my third PSA test now in uh, uh, 11 months, and uh, the number came back at 10.5. So that's even more disturbing. My urologist, when I saw him, said, wow, this is not good. We need, to, we need to do something. But since you had a lot of inflammation uh, when we got the biopsy results back, let's put you on the uh, antibiotics and anti-inflammatories for another month and see what happens. So we did that. And I came back again and had my 
fourth PSA test in a year on December 21st, a year and a day since the first one. And my result came back at 9.3. My PSA had gone down. And uh, doctor looked at the result and said, well, you know, we, we need to confirm if this, if it's just a fluke that it went down. It didn't go down as much as I would like to have seen it go down based on that treatment if it's just inflammation. So I said, okay. He said, well, why don't we wait another three months or so and see what it looks like again. And, and at that point, we'll decide what to do. So, came back on March 22nd, and I had my fifth PSA test in 15 months, and went back in to see the doctor the next day, and my PSA was down to 7.3. Statistically speaking, unchanged from where it was at the beginning of the saga. And uh, if we plotted my PSA results, they went up to 10.5. And then in an almost linear trend with time, from 10.5 down to 7.3. So, my urologist said, this is really good. If you had prostate cancer, your PSA level would not have gone down from 10.5 to 7.3 from November to March. So I'm pretty confident that you probably don't have prostate cancer, that you have had an inflammation issue. And I confirmed that over the last couple of months, uh, I had been having less difficulty urinating and uh, things seem to be working pretty well and because one of the issues with a swollen prostate or an infected prostate uh, is that it can make it difficult to urinate when i saw the urologist there you know in late march about a week ago uh, what he said was look at this point i'm pretty sure you don't have prostate what we've done really is been dealing we've been dealing with inflammation probably mild prostatitis and uh, and uh, as as he and he reiterated that because my prostate specific antigen PSA level had gone down from November to March that I really probably don't have anything to worry about and I'm sort of back at my baseline for me personally my age now, one of the things that he had discovered is that during the uh, biopsy last April, they image your prostate with ultrasound. And he was able to determine the size of my prostate. And my prostate is pretty big comparatively. And PSA levels are correlated with prostate size. And basically what he thinks is that I have a condition called benign prostate hyperplasia which means that as I as I have aged my prostate gland has gotten bigger and, and but it's a benign condition that's very common in, in older men so anyway the conclusion of that uh, visit with the urologist was that he said uh, well why don't we uh, look at this uh, one more time in a year? You can come back. We'll do another PSA test. And we'll see where you are a year from now. So he said, you know, I'm pretty confident that you don't have prostate cancer. Or if you do, it's a variant that's going to develop very slowly. And it might take 15 or 20 years now, since 15 or 20 years will put me in my 90s, and I have an incurable form of leukemia, which is coming back right now since my treatment six years ago, um, I'm rather unlikely to be alive then. So I won't be worried about prostate cancer. And uh, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. 
And for the next year, I'm going to try not to think about it. But the whole thing is, I had five prostate PSA tests that really probably weren't necessary. And I had a prostate biopsy, which definitely wasn't necessary. And there's another thing to consider. My urologist, before this last test, was thinking about doing another biopsy. I looked up some of the statistics of uh, prostate, second prostate biopsies following a negative biopsy, and they only have about a 15% chance of detecting prostate cancer. So it didn't seem like it was a very good thing to do without having some sort of imaging exam, an MRI, uh, to determine if there really was anything to sample. So, you know, I, as is common for older men who get a PSA test when they're older, was overtreated as a consequence of PSA tests when I really am very likely not to have a significant prostate cancer. And the medical system spent oh, a little over $10,000 on my treatment, mostly for the uh, prostate biopsy. So, you know, and basically the conclusion after 15 months is that there wasn't really any reason to do it. And uh, so, one of the things that I picked up in my reading over the last 15 months is that there is a recommendation from the National Institute of Health that men 70 or older not be given PSA tests unless they have symptoms uh, that could be a consequence of prostate cancer. And I don't have any symptoms. So my new family doctor probably should not have had a, prost a PSA test done uh, on me because at the time I was over 70. So, you know, I'm a, yet another statistic of somebody who had a PSA test done in his 70s and it resulted in a lot of follow-up, some anxiety and concern, uh, apparently for nothing. But at least now I know that I do have an enlarged prostate. I am susceptible to inflammation and uh, you know that can be a concern probably means that periodically i'll be taking some antibiotics but it's not a big deal it is certainly not life threatening and the other result of all this is i probably all right i would say i definitely did not need to have a prostate biopsy okay that's what i wanted to talk about my prostate cancer saga, which fortunately uh, came to the conclusion that I don't have prostate cancer, or if I do, it's a, one of the very slow developing types that is not uh, an issue and probably won't be an issue for the rest of my life. But I will get another PSA test in a year just to see if anything funny is going on. And my urologist did say that since I'll be uh, 70, almost 74 at that point, that uh, that probably will be the last one unless it comes back really high. So that's it. Hopefully the end of my prostate cancer saga with a very uh, positive Result, no prostate cancer. Thanks for watching.